All right. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Culture Shock. I have... Uh, introduce yourself, man. Hey, I have my brother here. Cruz Kale. Caleb Cruz, whatever y'all want. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to go by? Uh, Cruz Kale is cool. All right. So, <laughs> how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, just got done with the show with Onyx the other night. It was pretty fun. How you doing? I'm I'm doing all right. I'm getting by. So, uh, to start the interview, first question is, uh, fuck it. All right. First question is, when did you know you wanted to be a rapper? Hmm. It was kind of tricky because, like, I started writing and shit probably, like, a year before I recorded, but I didn't really, like, have any dreams or aspirations of being a rapper. I was just kind of doing it to fuck around, and uh, and I ended up uh, recording day one, and then once I, like, heard that, you know, I could sound legit inside of a studio and shit, that's when I started, like, actually seeing myself as a rapper. That's when I started getting goals and, you know. That's, so I think it's when I recorded day one. Day one's a fucking banger, by the way. I appreciate that. Some good shit, man. Whenever I work out, I always have your guys' music. Because it's either you or Onyx that gets me through that run or that fucking cardio workout or something. I appreciate that. That's what I'm going for. And you, you've never released a song up until this point. <laughs> I hadn't even recorded anything. You uh, haven't released a song that isn't like, you know, dog shit. So all of the songs have been good. <laughs> I appreciate that. I try to work on it. If there's anybody, okay, our next question is if there's anybody that inspires you and your work, who is it and why that? I have to say it's J. Cole and Kendrick the most. Of course, there's like a bunch of other artists. Like, I really fuck with Toby Rigue, uh, you know, Earth Gang. There's a whole bunch of other people that I really fuck with. But mainly it's J. Cole and Kendrick. They have like the most influence on my style. I like to get my bars and my flowiness and like how I like to put my words together from Cole. And I try to take that energy that Kendrick brings to this track and like I try to bring that onto mine because I love the way he brings his shit. But of course he got bars and shit too. Is there any I didn't write this question down, but since we're talking about you know, artists that inspire you, this is just gonna be off the cuff. Is there any artist outside of the rap genre? Because I know, or that inspire you, because I know from growing up, we used to really fuck with Bring Me the Horizon, Asking Alexandria, A Day to Remember, Attack Attack, bands like that. But yeah, the question though, is there any artists outside of the rap genre that kind of inspire your work? I mean, to be honest, not really. I don't really, like, I used to listen to that stuff, like, a lot in high school, but once I started getting into rap, I kind of stopped, like, listening to the, that all together. Don't get me wrong, I still like it, it's still dope, but it's just not, like, something I listen to on my own. All right. That was a good answer. <laughs> uh, next question is, do you have any other ventures in the music business that you'd want to go after? Uh, if I could eventually learn how to sing, I'd love to go into, like, R&B and shit. Like, that'd be cool. I really like R&B. I like the way they structure their songs, how it sounds, how smooth it is. So I'd like to do that shit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, dude, I'd be down to hear it. <laughs> I'd, I'd be down to hear you. <laughs> he play some fucking uh, R&B and start, start grooving. I'd be down to see that shit, too. <laughs> I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna try to learn how to sing. All right. Next question is: Who's your favorite rapper and uh, favorite rap group, like Wu Tang Clan or Suicide Boys, yeah, groups like that? 
Alright, for sure. Um, so my favorite rapper is probably J. Cole. I mean, Ron loved Kendrick too, but I think I listen to J. Cole more than I listen to anybody. Um, but my favorite group would have to be Top Dog. Cause I, I don't know, there's so many fucking people on Top Dog that I fuck with. And like, Dream Bull Stack, but TDE's got my heart. <laughs> that's, that's a good answer. Uh, since I, I, you've seen these questions uh, and you've been able to loosely plan out what you're going to say. So, uh, next question I have on the list here is favorite horror movie. Uh, once again, like I, horror movies are cool, but it's like I like funny movies. But I think if I had to pick them, it'd probably be the Freddy vs. Jason movies. I really like those. Dude, that movie was fucking oh my god. The hype around that movie when it since it came out in 2003. It it came out at least 10 years after both um the Nightmare on Elm Street movie series and the Friday the 13th series had been dead for like 10 years. But they <laughs> this crossover by that point in time had been trying to happen for at least 10 to 15 years. So there was so much hype around this movie and it once it came out it became such a huge hit that both Friday the 13th and A Nightmare on Elm Street both got remakes in the later 2010s. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And to this date, I think uh, the Freddy vs. Jason is had one of the biggest, the second biggest opening weekend for a horror movie of all time. Damn. Yeah, that that's how you can tell what kind of cultural impact this movie had. <laughs> all right. Uh, next question is favorite movie of all time. Um. Kind of hard to say that Step Brothers are hot rod. <clears throat> I have to agree because those movies are fucking great. <laughs> that's just movies we watched a lot growing up, so I think that's why. Favorite uh, Bring the Horizon record off of uh, their like out of their entire career. Favorite record of all time. I think it was called "There's a Hell, Believe Me, I've Seen It." There's a heaven. Let's keep it a secret. I think that was the one with, like, don't go on it. I think it's just yeah. because there's so much, like, emotional ties to that album. Because it's just all the shit we went through during that time. But yeah, like, that that has to be one of... I, I don't mean to interrupt you. I don't want to be that podcast host that talks over his guests like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm just trying to, you know, make everybody feel comfortable and make the... Make the interview flow like a normal conversation. And yeah, that, that, let me check the date of when that, um, that album came out, but yeah, that album came out around a time that was very tough for us, which I'm not going to get into, but I, I, I agree for I think my favorite record, it has to be, that's in my top three, though. It has to be either, oh, for my top three, or no, top five, has to be, uh, Ch- not Chelsea Smile, but uh, Suicide Season. That That's the name of the record. Suicide Season, There's a Hell, Believe Me, I've Seen It. Uh, Sepaternal. Which is the one with uh, Diamonds Aren't Forever. I like that that's one. uh suicide season. Okay, I really like that one. And there is also this is what the edge of your seat is made for, which was a EP they released in like 2013 or something like that that went back to their roots of uh suicide season and uh uh fuck, I can't remember the name of that album. The one that had uh, <laughs> 15 Fathoms and Counting. Uh, their softest song ever. 
Yeah. All right. Next question is uh, favorite asking Alexandria record of all time. Um, I only remember really listening to two, and uh, I think it was like Stand Up and Scream and Reckless, or Reckless and Relentless. And I don't, I can't really remember which one, but I, I like both of them a lot when I was. Listening. Yeah, both of those records are really fucking good. Uh, Stand Up and Scream has to be my favorite Asking Alexandria record of all time. Yeah. Because uh, I, since I grew up around you guys, and you guys listened to this type of music, so I kind of, you know, I followed suit. <laughs> and I remember the first time I watched... Uh, Fuck, I can't remember the name of the song. No, it was the Come Down, the music video for the Come Down, where it had the Predator in it, and he was uh, playing soccer with the kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, isn't yeah, that a, he, isn't it a Come Down? Yeah, that's the Come Down. Yeah. Our favorite, well, I think you're going to like this question, because this band... Uh, me and uh, me and Malachi really, we we really really like them. Uh, I'm pretty sure you do too, because we all grew up around the same music scene. So, uh, favorite a day to remember record of all time? Uh, probably Homesick. I think that was the one that like got me into them a lot. And like when I seen them live, like I saw them like play that stuff. So I think that record always has a soft spot for me. Because that record had uh, Have Faith in Me and uh, that song Have Faith in Me. It was Downfall of Us All too, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is a... The record came out on October 4th, 2010. Uh, this is... Um, there is a hell, believe me, I've seen it. There is a heaven. Let's keep it a secret. Okay. That's that, good. Yeah. yeah, that record came out on October fourth, two thousand ten. That was like right before. Yeah. The, yeah. It was, dude. Fuck. But um, I I don't think I can like legitimately listen to that since it's one of my favorite records. But I just can't listen to it anymore. You know what I mean? There's certain songs I can, but like, if I even hear like the first seconds of like "Don't Go," I start crying. Like this. Yeah, I just fucking same here. I just fucking break down, and it's it's just not a. <laughs> whenever that song comes up, uh, when I'm listening to "Bring Me the Horizon," I just skip it immediately because I don't want to. I don't want to be dramatic for fucking thirty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, all right so how do you think we are 13 minutes in how how do you feel <laughs> Chilling. You know, like this so, you know, i'm trying to like, i'm trying to be good at it but hey you're you're doing you're doing a great job you're doing a <laughs> you're doing a whole lot better than <laughs> Than one of my friends did on the, on the episode that I recorded just before I left. You're doing a whole lot better than I thought you would. <laughs> You're doing great. All right. So ha for this next question, have you listened to Bring With the Horizons' new record, uh, Post Surviving Human Horror, or Post Survival Human? Yeah, Post Survival Human Horror. No, I haven't. Did you like it, dude? Oh, uh, I'm going to go off on a tirade. This album is so great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's so good. Um, have Since I know you watch anime, and we're going to get into that a little later, but have you ever heard of a band named Baby Metal? No. Dude, they're, they're this, this, they're, they are this band of uh, Japanese chicks that... Uh, they have these. They got them anime voices, dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I listened to them before, uh, like this 
this record came out, but they have a song called Kingslayer on the album with Bring Me the Horizon. And dude, it it has to be my favorite album, favorite song I'll on the record. Listen to it after this. After this, I'll not to break the fourth wall or anything, but. <laughs> We're um stuff since I can. Okay. All of that, right? Dance, bro. But mm-hmm. he was fighting, so he, didn't, he didn't show up. All right, uh, you met Vitor Belfort, though, right? Uh, I think it was Vanderlei. I met. Oh, Austin. yeah, Vanderlei Silva. Yeah, Damn. I met like, quite a few of them, like the old school people. All right, uh, favorite. That transitions into my next question. Favorite MMA feud of all time. This can either be, uh. Like Lesnar versus Mir, or like, you know, feuds like that. Favorite MMA feud of all time? Shit. I had to say probably the Silva Sonnen because like Sonnen was talking so much shit, and then he almost beat Anderson in the first fight, and Anderson just came back and beat his ass in the second fight. Because I think it was the second fight. You you remember the fight where uh, I think it was in 2013. You remember when uh, Sonnen was, uh, he was, like, trying to do some flashy shit, and he tried to go for the spinning back fist? Yeah, and then <laughs> a duck it and then hit him in the chest. <laughs> he, yeah, he fucking ate shit, fell on his ass, <laughs> and then it looked like Silva kneed him in the fucking face, dude. <laughs> I don't know. That shit was crucial. Favorite Anderson Silva fight of all time? Forrest Griffin. Oh, like dude. Like, oh. make shit and just pop his jaw out of place. Dude, like, <laughs> I, I remember uh, watching that fight. I mean, I I don't remember if I really watched that fight, but we when we had Fight Pass, I remember <laughs> watching that fight because I was just on an Anderson Silva kick. I wanted to watch uh, Silva fights. Yeah. So, and how he knocked this motherfucker out was... It was so nonchalant. It was just like he just leaned back and jabbed. <laughs> yeah, his jaw was dead. That's why he ran out of the cage afterwards because his jaw was dislocated. And as far as I know, when he uh, ran out of the cage, uh, he got fined by uh, Dana White for running out of the, for running out of the cage before the introductions or the finishing. Uh, introductions. That sounds like some shit they would do. And okay, uh, next question. Since you know how I'm gonna end up being a professional wrestler, and I've told you about this, how there's the school that has yeah. a TV program. Yeah, that's just gonna be dope. And I'm telling you, dude. Once I like graduate from like the college and everything. They will be monsters. You you will be walking around the corner in the house, right? Mm-hmm. Not to break kayfabe, but you're gonna be walking around the corner, right? You're gonna yeah. you're gonna come face to face with Frankenstein. <laughs> That'd be fucking weird. Just be prepared for that, okay? I'm sure Fernando would love it. Be prepared to have your head in the refrigerator. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I told you, once I get good enough at the at the makeup, I'm gonna take a picture. I'm a I'm gonna have you sit in a chair, right? Yeah. And then I'm gonna put all like the plaster shit on your head so I can get the mold. And then I'm gonna have you sit there. You're gonna be sitting in the chair for like twelve hours. All right. So 
it, it's gonna take a while. Cause I gotta make the mold of your head and I gotta put a bunch of plaster shit all over your head and wait for it to harden and then I gotta cut it out and then take that plaster mold and blow it up and then so I can like get the hair follicles right and everything. I'm trying to do some crazy shit for like a music video with you doing that. Dude, totally that that sounds like some Rob Zombie shit, not gonna lie. I'm trying to think of something. Cause that makeup course is a two year course. And since I'm going we're completely off topic now, but <laughs> now uh, let me finish. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that makeup course is a two year course. And f- since I'm going to go for four years, uh, for the remaining two years, I'm going to go for something along the lines in the film industry, like screenwriting or something like film editing or some shit along those lines. Yeah. So, um, and after I graduate from like that college and everything, 25 minutes away. Uh, well, I think it's in uh, Mesa. But how how far away is Mesa from uh, Tempe? Blanco is Mesa. But it's like, what, 10, 15 minutes? Oh, that's... Yeah, it's like Hemet and San Jacinto. How Hemet and San Jacinto is, is how Tempe and Mesa is. Oh, I I did not know that. I thought it was. I thought it was a whole lot. I thought I'd have to drive a whole lot more. <laughs> I mean, it obviously depends on like what part of Mesa and shit. But yeah, it shouldn't be that far. Uh, okay, there's the school, and then like right next to that school, there is a uh, wrestling promotion named. Uh, the promotion is named Championship Wrestling from Arizona. So, and they have a short, not a short circuit, but what do you, you know, the small circuit TV programs in, uh, like, Arizona? Yeah, just, so, like, stations. Yeah, it's going to be on small circuit television. So, awesome. I'm going to end up on TV, man. Hey, Once cool. I sign with that promotion. That'd be cool. I'd be dope to be able to watch you on TV and shit. Yeah, at that point, we're getting cable. <laughs> I uh, I don't care what you guys say. We're getting cable. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See, to get back, we're uh, completely off topic. <laughs> but uh, to get back on track, the last since we're talking about wrestling, uh, and I know you haven't watched it in years and don't know that much about it. But when you did watch it when you were a kid, since I know you. Onyx and Malachi kind of were like, you know, Stone Cold, you guys grew up in the Attitude Era. The atti- the era of Stone Cold, Kane, Undertaker, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, so on and so forth. Uh, who is your favorite wrestler fr- uh, favorite, just favorite wrestler of all time? I mean, I don't really have a favorite i'd say it's the hardy boys or the destruction brothers because like i always kind of just put all three of like cause me Eli, malachi back in the day just turn shit up so it's like i'd always like group us up with those i guess all uh believe it or not did you know jeff hardy both of the hardy boys are still wrestling are they really aren't they all this shit Jeff Hardy is 42 years old, and Matt Hardy is like 43 or something like that, right? I think they're a year apart, but they're in their late 40s. And Undertaker, this past November, he retired after a 30-year career. (coughs) That's wild. His body probably hurts. Because here's what he would do. He would wrestle one match a year, which was at WrestleMania. He'd... Well, this was after he became, like, after he stopped being a full-time performer. Uh, He'd wrestle one match a year, which was Mania. And he'd wrestle that match. He'd go get a surgery done. And then he'd train for next year's WrestleMania. And then wrestle that match, get a surgery done. And it it was like that for at least 10 years. 10, maybe 13, 14 years. 
Oh shit. And then in 2014, uh, the wrestling world was shocked because you know how The Undertaker had his uh, legendary undefeated streak of WrestleMania? Yeah. He doesn't have that anymore. Oh, shit, no. He got beat in 2014 by Brock Lesnar. Fuck. And... So currently, his wrestling re- there's only been two people that have beat him in the history of him wrestling at WrestleMania. His WrestleMania record is twenty five and two. The two people that have beat him are uh, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. So, uh, yeah, there's that. <laughs> Okay. Record. Yeah, for thirty years in the business, that's not a bad record. All right. Since I know that it's what this was back in twenty eleven, right? When you did started doing jujitsu and you had the <laughs> long emo hair, <laughs> and yeah. you were. <laughs> I think it was around there. You looked like the. Uh, the MySpace, not the, yeah, the MySpace uh, fucking seeing kids I make fun of, you look like that. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> <The girls laughs> love it. Right. It, back then, but. <laughs> you, you look like, back then, you, lo- you basically looked like Ollie Sykes. Let's just say that. <laughs> You look like 2008 Ollie Sykes. Yeah. I was trying to get like something like that. <laughs> okay. Now that we talk about uh, jujitsu, and since I want to learn jujitsu, but I can't afford it. <laughs> and I was talking to Roger. And since I, I've been talking to him off and on for a, a long time, actually, before we, he came down and then we saw him. Uh, before that, I talked to him for a while, and then he was like, oh, yeah. What, he said, when are you going to get your ass in here? Because I was uh, talking to him about jujitsu. I told him when I can afford it, and then he just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just expensive, man. It, from, I remember it was you, me, and it was Nana. Uh, she, she'd take us to the uh, – I was talking to Nana about this last night. Uh, your fights, and uh, like we'd use, we used to always go to the jujitsu place. It's no longer there. It moved. Yeah, yeah, I heard. yeah. It moved. I have no idea where it is now, but <laughs> it's no longer where it used to be. But I remember uh, we used to always go and watch you uh, roll around. And I remember it was uh, Malachi was there too, and <laughs> uh, you he'd let or you'd let him or something something would happen where he'd roll around with you guys, like he'd roll with you guys. Yeah, I was, it was like every once in a while uh, the owner would let like he would bring you guys in. Well, you let Malachi. I don't remember if I ever got you in, but uh, I remember. Oh, finish. Sorry, I interrupted. But every once in a while, they just let me bring y'all in for a class. Because I, <laughs> I specifically remember one time <laughs> where uh, you guys were choosing partners to roll with, right? And uh, you remember Larry? Yeah, yeah, the big dude. Yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, Malachi pointed at Larry, and he was like, I want you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that shit too. <laughs> and dude, I started laughing my ass off. I I thought it was the funniest shit in the world. <laughs> I remember uh when we used to go in and like Malachi would roll with you guys. Uh I was too young to roll at the time. I was not allowed to roll with you guys and do like uh knee bars and shit. Uh what you would do is you'd point at the punching bag. And you'd say, go ham. 
So that's what I did. And oh, dude, I fucking I let loose on that damn thing. At least I I used to let loose on that thing, dude. It was it was a whole lot of fun. <laughs> oh, what's up, dog? <laughs> I mean, this, like, the listeners aren't going to see the video portion of the podcast, but this is just so I can see you. <laughs> this is just for me. So, I mean, I mean, we come down here, too, it's like, I'll be able to get you in the gym I train at, and then be able to hit that shit again. Dude, I would look. Uh, okay. Uh, shit, this is completely unprofessional. But, you know what? Fuck it. I'll show you. I'll show you after. Because you remember the Saboba fight? For yeah. gladiators, yeah, I have that ticket. Oh shit, that's pretty cool. You yeah, I. Hmm. You still have it? Yeah, I still have the ticket. That's cool. And that's I cool. would show it to you, but uh, that's completely unprofessional, and you would have to kill time. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I don't want to put you on the spot like that. So I'd I'd rather not put you on the spot like that and have you just talk about random shit and kill time while I find it. So I'm gonna show you later. Cause I you know, I just want you to not be awkward and kill time while I go look for it. So I'll show you later. Yeah, I appreciate that. That would be very awkward. <laughs> And it'd be super unprofessional on me because I'm the fucking host and you're my guest. <laughs> so I feel like a, you know, a cock knob. <laughs> so <laughs> super professional here, folks. It's, uh, it's only getting downhill from here. Welcome to the fucking ride. All right. <laughs> so as we uh, segue into your MMA career, can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, all right. So let, let's talk about it. Uh, the final two questions I have written down are ask about his MMA career and then ask about Muay Thai, like what he's doing. <laughs> and that's, God damn it, I need to fix the brightness. But that is legitimately the last two questions I have. Yeah, that's good. Is it? That's all I got. <laughs> So, uh, I remember it was, say, around 2011, right? I, I'd say roughly around 2011 when uh, you started doing the jiu-jitsu and then started fighting? Maybe. I think maybe like 2011, 2012, somewhere around there. Because I remember it was after you, because you went to Talkwitz and then you <laughs> you played running back for like a season or something like that. I didn't play shit. I sat on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, I'm telling you, I still have uh, all three of you guys. Your Max Preps pages, I got them bookmarked on my browser. <laughs> need to leave mine, bro. I didn't Just shit. to look at them. <laughs> my stats are from Eli because he wore my jersey on the last game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and... Uh, Coming up, uh, this is just for the listeners, though. Coming up, I'm going to have an interview with you and Onyx. You guys are going to be like a joint deal since I'm going to have separate interviews with you and then him. And then I'm going to have one interview with the both of you as like a representation of like your label. Well, that'd be cool. Because I, I think it'd make good content, you know, since I'm... Not grasping at straws here, but I figured, you know what? Fuck it. Why not? You you guys are available, so I figured, you know what? And it'd be a good way to promote your brand and, like, your music and all that. So I figured, you know, I have a platform. Why not fucking use it? So I feel it. I mean, as long as Eli's down, I'm always down. Yeah, I'm just waiting on Eli. <laughs> oh, shit. We broke kayfabe, Caleb. <laughs> you broke kayfabe. Damn! I broke kayfabe twice. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Shit. This can only get worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We broke kayfabe. We've, we've officially broken kayfabe. So I'm going to just call you Caleb. And, like, just drop the brand name. 
<laughs> All right. So let's talk about your MMA career. You fought from 2011 or 2012, whenever that was, until when? Uh, like 2013. So that was a good year and a half run. Yeah. Would you say? About a year and a half, yeah. And, and going three, so I didn't do too well. Uh, only three fights? Yeah, it was only three. Because if I'm not mistaken, uh, Nana, Eli, and Malachi went to one of them, right? Yeah, I think my very first one. And then... Was the Gladiators uh, one the second one or the first one? That was the very first one. Oh, uh, yeah, I have that ticket then. Yeah, yeah. And then I went to, like... I think one of my fights, no, none of y'all saw because it was like way the fuck out, like in San Diego. So I was like super far. And then my third fight, I want to say Eli and Malachi were there. It might have been just Eli. I'm not sure. Because from what I, since I was talking to Nana last night, uh, she said, <laughs> she said she was uh, at the fight, right? But she was like, you know, when someone watches a horror movie, and they're like this. Yeah, yeah. She was like that. I know that part of the audio is going to turn out like shit, but you know what? Fuck it. The rest of this interview is kind of okay. We're 30, we're 36 minutes in. This is uh, a whole lot more than I thought we would get. You know? I, <laughs> so, to move on, uh, we talked about your MMA career. And do you have any aspirations? To get back into it, I mean, as of right now, I probably not. It depends. Like, if I ever get in the position to become like a paid fighter, of course, I'm gonna hop right back into MMA. But I mean, for now, I'm probably just gonna stick with Muay Thai and do amateur fights, and then like you know, try to become a coach, and then like you know, work my way into jujitsu that way, just like becoming a, tr- a coach or some shit. Dude, I'd be totally down. For, oh, okay, that's a perfect segue. Actually, that is a perfect segue into Muay Thai. Well, since we're going to talk about Muay Thai. All right. Since you've been doing Muay Thai for a while now, right? It's been like a year. Because from what I've seen on your Instagram, which I will plug later on, uh, <laughs> at the end of this interview, I'm going to have you uh, plug all your shit. So, cool. yeah. You, Obviously, you got to have that. So, yeah, yeah, of course. Is, yeah, you got to plug your shit. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you were doing, uh, the from what I've seen on your Instagram, you've been doing the, the Muay Thai, and it looks like you're kicking the shit out of people, dude. You're... <laughs> <laughs> and the yeah. stories I've heard, oh my God, since I, I when Caleb, not Caleb, Eli, when he was down here in October for uh, for the 10 year, he was down here for that week. Yeah. And he was talking to me, right? And uh, he he was like, uh, Caleb is probably, that's what he's probably going to do with his life. He's probably going to get back into fighting and fucking murder people. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I'd be down to watch it. I'd promote the shit. I mean, as soon as, like, as soon as there's a fight available in Arizona, I'm going to take one. So I want to do a Muay Thai fight. I want to try to get, like, at least two this year if I can. Because from what, from the stories I was told, what, you would, you would come home with bruises on your legs, and it'd be the other guy. It'd be from you kicking the shit out of people, not people kicking the shit out of you. No, nah, definitely, like... I, for being honest, I train with a lot of good people, so I get my ass kicked more than I do, like, kick ass. So, But it's like, yeah, we go hard. Like, there'd be times I'll have bruises on my ribs. But, I mean, that's just how it goes. That's the fight game. You, get, you know, you can't be a pussy. Oh, yeah, you can't be a little bitch. Anyway, uh, he told me that you'd come home with, like, bruises everywhere, and you'd, you'd just be like, you know, not limping, but I'm assuming you would because you'd be sore I'm- as fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I've limped a lot. (laughs) (laughs) 
And uh, Nana, dude, Nana was showing me some pictures of uh, mom, and she showed me a picture of mom when she was when f- it was like Faith Sage, right? Mm-hmm. When she she was like she, dude, Faith Jukes looks just like her. It's insane. It's oh, yeah. I'm like if you've ever seen that picture of mom when she was like modeling, yeah, Faith, like, yeah. yeah. Um, Nana was going through pictures trying to find one of me, and. Uh, Oh, and you know what's super fucking weird? So, you know, uh, oh, no, you didn't come down. But she showed me a picture on Christmas, right, mm-hmm. of me. And I was like, I was a little shithead. I, <laughs> I can talk shit on myself because it's my show. But, <laughs> uh, like, I had a fucking vest on and everything, right? I was posing for like a, I think it was a first grade picture or something like that. Or kin- it might have been kindergarten. I was really young at the time. When it looked like I shit my pants. <laughs> like the look on my face, either there was two things. It either looked I had dropped a deuce in my shorts and told no one about it and was like, oh, you motherfuckers are going to find out after this photo is done. Mm-hmm. Or I was up to something and no one knew about it. I mean, when you were a baby, you were always up to shenanigans, dude. So it's like, <laughs> probably just like, you had probably done something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I figured since we are now 41, 41 minutes and 38 seconds into the interview, uh, we're going to shoot for, we're going to shoot for an hour, but the rest of it is, or shoot as long as, how long would you want this to go for? Since it's just going to be a free-flowing conversation. Yeah, just to naturally end. This is cool. All right. Because I don't want to just bring it to an abrupt end. Be like, ah, fuck. You know, see you later. Yeah, we're done. We're done. Uh, you know, fuck you, man. We're done. We're out of here. See you later. We're, we're, we're gone. Because <laughs> I, I don't want you to... I don't want you to come down here and kick the shit out of me because of this. <laughs> be like, you know, motherfucker... And then you just start throwing head kicks and shit. Uh, and then you kick my head off. <laughs> All right. So, uh, as we transition, um, from what, from the pictures I've seen over the last three days and from the stories I've been told, uh, it's super weird because I'm basically, I'm technically an adult now, legally. So... Yeah, yeah. Grown ass man. Yeah, I'm technically by the court of law, I'm a grown ass man now. And I know for you guys, it's super weird. Yeah, it definitely is. Because I've always been the baby since I'm the youngest of three brothers. And you, you guys, fuck. Like, from what I, I was told, you were the one beating the shit out of people. Eli was just, Eli was the one helping, and then Malachi was the one standing there looking at it going. Yeah, it was, it was pretty much just y'all, them trying to fucking survive me terrorizing everybody. <laughs> but it is and then, I remember, like, um, when I had left Fort Korea, I remember, like, you were still, like, a baby baby. Well, not baby baby, but, like, you were still, like, small and shit, like, below my waist. And then when I came back, you were like fucking like looking me in my eyes and shit. <laughs> it's super weird, huh? <laughs> yeah, you like shot up out of like I think I was over there for like a year and a half. And like a year and a half you grew like three feet. Cause I <laughs> Cause dude, I still I think I still have some of the letters from uh when because remember we'd write letters back and forth? Yeah, I still have all mine. I th- I think I still have some of them. Or I'm gonna need to look around if if I uh if I see them like if I find them I'll like take pictures of them and send them to you. But uh yeah, I I think I still have some of them. I remember one letter specifically. It was when uh you were writing about you learned how to shoot an AK-47. It wasn't an AK. Was it wasn't an AK? It was an M4. Oh. Sorry. I don't know guns, but. <laughs> yeah. 
but uh, I remember you, like, you learned how to shoot guns, and you were like, this is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never like, really messed with them too much. And then, just to the army, I got to shoot them a bunch, so I got, like, addicted to that shit. And I gotta say, when you were in the army and, like, the suits and shit, you looked clean, dude. Not to, like, not to kiss no- your ass, but you look clean as fuck. <laughs> I appreciate it. I didn't like it. I can have a beer. So, technically, if, uh, you know how you say you're Superman, right? Yeah. Technically, since, you know, my father is Batman, he, he's Dark Avenger of the Night. He's Batman. <laughs> he's got the whole suit and everything. He fucking tights up in leotard, and it's it's a horrifying sight. <laughs> but... Technically, if he's Batman and you're Superman, you guys have fought at least once. Because Batman vs. Superman was a movie that happened. Yeah, we fought plenty of times. <laughs> Just a lot of verbal fights. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Uh, as we move on, do you have... And I'm pretty sure you do, because... Uh, going back to uh, I was at Nana's house. She told me that, and she showed me pictures of. She, there was this one picture. It was all four of us, right? And it was like a blue background, and like you guys, you and Caleb. No, you, you're Caleb. You and Eli had like spiked up hair, and then there was Malachi. It was, and you guys were all dressed up, and then I was just like right beside Malachi in a hat. And then you had your arm around me, kind of like in a chokehold. You you know yeah. the photo I'm I... talking about. Yeah. But from what she told me, she said that you you've uh, always been like super. Actually, all of you have been like super protective of, protective of me ever since I was, you know, a fucking real real small kid. And but like she was like that just reinforces it. He's always been. He's always been really protective of you and like, you know, and all that. I was like, oh, all right. I guess I'm going to have to talk to him about that when we do the podcast. But yeah. Uh, I mean, what? Okay. We're protective over every every one of our, every one of y'all I'm protective over. Because so from what I, would, I was told, uh, you fucking, you're like the, since, you're basically the glue that holds everything together, from what Nana told me. Nah, Since you were like seventeen. <laughs> nah, because I don't, I wouldn't say that, but there's we had a weird family dynamic. So yeah, a way to explain it, which we're not going to get into. But uh, what um, what do you think of uh, my logo, the logo I made for the podcast? You drew that shit. I hand drew it and everything on my on my laptop. Damn, that shit's clean. And I, uh, since I really liked the, um, as you can tell, I really liked the whole skeleton vibe. I drew two, two of them, and I sent both of them to Eli. The other one I'll show you after. Uh, actually, I think I can pull it up right now. But as we continue, uh, do you have any like? Stupid ass stories of shit that. Oh, that. Since we're talking about stories, I remember this one time. Uh, you guys bought a UFC title belt, right? Mm. And you just because I, I'd be referee because I wasn't allowed to fight. <laughs> but like you, you remember the fucking toy UFC belt you guys bought? Yeah. And then you just beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> Yeah, we'd fight for the belt and shit. Yeah, and then I'd be like, okay, here he wins. All right. So, uh, do you have any uh, stories of... Okay, here here's the logo. I don't know if you can see it that well. Can you see it that well? Yeah, I like that one too. That one was dope. I, I couldn't choose... I, I didn't know which one to choose. So, my, Eli was like, flip a coin. So I did, and then the first one, inevitably. What I was thinking would be a whole lot cooler, though, is if is if I made the skull on the first one red instead of white. 
I think uh, that would have been pretty kick ass. Only one way to find out. Yeah, that is true. I think these two things have to be the best things I've ever drawn, actually. Cause I'm I'm not very good. I'm better at coming up with storylines and you know shit like that. I'm not good at the artistry stuff, but that's more hey, of Fernanda and Dad. Nah, bro, you can draw. You just need to practice it. All right. Well, uh, as we segue into stories and stuff, since you know, I was I can't remember much from when I was a little kid. Uh, do you have any stories of any of the stupid ass shit I would do as a child? Oh, there's just there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got the time. <laughs> I think. I think I mean, it's not really like you because like, this is like anybody that tries to teach anybody how to read that's to deal with this shit. Like, <laughs> aggravating thing I would get with you is I remember you were trying to learn how to read and like you wouldn't read, you wouldn't try to read, you would just look at the picture and guess what it was supposed to be. You wouldn't try to read it at all. That sounds so like I would, something I do. I would get so irritated. I was like, read the fucking word. <laughs> Like, I can't. And then, like, I do through the picture, and then, like, guess the picture wrong. I get so irritated. <laughs> look, look at me now. Fucking. <laughs> fucking several years later. <laughs> I just, I, I, I can still read. I just can't spoke words all that well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, words, words, and other words I, I guarantee you if you gave me a book now i'd i'd read it front to back <laughs> so i think i've come a long way you'd be proud of me <laughs> like i said i'm pretty sure it's just everybody like when they kind of read it's just a process but i never really like tried to help anybody else read so i think that's why it stuck with me the most it's like, <laughs> to help and i was like fuck this is annoying you're like i'm never gonna have kids <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh is there anything else that comes to mind of like stupid shit that i would or e even stupid shit me and malachi would do or just any one of us including faith like all of us is there any stupid shit or anything that we would do that sparks up a story in your head uh, no i don't know because i have a memory problem so like i i only remember stuff like when like it's mentioned or like I don't know how to explain it. It's hard for me to remember a lot of shit. But like on the spot I can't remember it. I can't think of nothing. All right. That reading story is gonna is, is gonna be a podcast all timer, man. That I I'm I'm telling you, uh for my I haven't even made a channel like a podcast trailer yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a whole bunch of these uh podcasts and like edit them together. And yeah. this bit right here is going to be in that trailer. <laughs> it's going to be fucking great. Anyway, uh, uh, as we're, we're not going to wrap up yet, we're only 53 minutes in. So uh, there was this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember there was this one time you were still in the military because uh, it was. No, you came back. I was in middle school at the time. And, like, they were having, like, this party or some shit at uh, the after-school program I was at. And you came to pick me up. It was you, me. No, it was you. Who came to pick me up was you, Malachi, Eli, and Nana. Yeah, I remember you, that. You remember this? <laughs> and you fucking... <laughs> you had your whole military thing on, right? And you had your arms out and everything. And I... I Bolt rush to Eli. <laughs> God, and neither one of you guys recognized me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I forgot about that part. I remember, like, you guys, but I forgot that, like, you yeah, didn't even recognize me. Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh,. <laughs> I, like I remember, I made a beeline right for because I saw you guys, and I made a beeline right, here, and he fucking 
like i remember once i like sacked him too like once i like hugged him he walked back like maybe maybe at least a foot and then i looked over to see who else was there and then once i saw you and like recognized who cuz i didn't as you can as you said i didn't recognize you but once you said once you said something like once you said some words it clicked in my head that it was you and i started crying yeah. i was in like i would say roughly 6th grade 7th grade maybe I all i, I know like, is that was basic that was like right before i went to korea i think Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that might have because I think you were you were down on leave or something like that. Yeah, I think so. That was like during Christmas leave and shit. Cuz uh I remember I was I was in middle school at the time. And as we all do when we go through middle school, uh uh well, I wasn't I I don't think this applies for all kids, but I discovered several different forms of music at the time because i had grown up with the uh you know the suicide season era stand up and scream era of like bring me the horizon and asking alexandria when i was in sixth grade i discovered nirvana and the whole grunge i want to kill myself you know like type of music <laughs> type of music and uh i fucking i i dove head deep into that shit dude and it was it was uh it was a really strange time <laughs> so that's all i'm gonna say about that it was really weird i'm pretty sure everybody's like that whole time is just weird for everybody it, it was it was a really weird time oh uh you remember that one time wait, wait no wait were you there or i think it was just malachi and uh El I think it was just Malachi and Eli. Uh, you guys caught me watching porn, or was that just Malachi and Eli? I I don't know, dude. That might have just been Malachi and Eli then. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a story for another time. Yeah. But because uh, <laughs> I remember they, because I didn't know how to clear my uh, search history at the time, like my browser history, I didn't know how to clear it. <laughs> so. They fucking went through a whole treasure trove. It was they started making fun of me. Oh, I was not <laughs> able to live that down. It was, <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. Now looking back at it, it was hilarious. But back when it happened, though, it was super embarrassing, and I felt bad. <laughs> I was like, oh no, here we go. Now I'm a whole lot more conservative. <laughs> I, I gotta go incognito. <laughs> <laughs> but uh as we continue on here we are 58 minutes in and uh yeah um going back to you were on leave and you came down and i remember once i once it clicked and i saw that it cuz i remember it was raining it was it I, it might have been raining outside uh, i don't think so it wasn't raining outside I don't think so. Oh, okay. All right. Um. Anyway, like once I once it clicked in my head <clears throat> that it was you. Uh, I remember I started crying, and then I gave you the fucking biggest hug, dude. I squeezed yeah. the shit out of you. I'm pretty sure you and Faith like almost toggled me. Yeah. Like, once we realized it was you, we fucking went all bases in and just. So there was that. All I know is I was, dude, I was so fucking happy to see you. Because <laughs> for months and months, we just wrote letters back and forth. And then I saw you, and I was like, oh shit, it's Caleb. Cool. Yeah, what, was the spent like a lot of time like away. I think that was the first time. And to go back to when you were in uh, high school, uh, the the I'm I'm gonna label it. I'm gonna brand it the emo phase. All right, because uh -huh. it was when <laughs> it, it was all three of you guys. You all of y'all 
I think all of us have gone through, all four of us have gone through an emo phase in our lives <laughs> with the long hair and the fucking hair that drapes over the eyes. See, I, my hair is not like that. I, I can't grow emo hair. I can only grow long, shitty ponytail hair. <laughs> I can't grow lo- fucking luxurious Ollie Sykes hair. All right. I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm not able to do that. You gotta work with what you got, bro. Fuck it. Yeah, so all I'm able to do is put it into a fucking little shitty Shawn Michaels ponytail. <laughs> so, um, uh, I remember, uh, yeah, this is probably going to be weird. You know what? Fuck it. I'll bring it up after. This does not deserve to be on the good graces of uh, Exposed. So I'm going to bring that up later. Bring that up later, because now looking back at it, it it was not very uh, it wasn't it wasn't very uh, appropriate. I would say I'm I would, I'll I'll talk about it later. Anyway, uh, uh, I remember that was back then when uh, the bands had like the comic book T-shirts. You know what I'm saying? Oh uh, yeah. I still yeah. have, you know that, oh, no, I don't. God, dude. Oh, shit. Because I remember there was this one Asking Alexandria t-shirt. Because at that point, at this point, it had a bunch of holes in it. Because I've had it for years. But I think I, I like, lost it or something. Something happened to it. I, I don't know where it is anymore. But I still have, like, an Asking Alexandria t-shirt of, that like, comic book time. <laughs> like phase and it I'll I'll show yeah. it to you after but we have officially hit an hour and an hour and 2 minutes how how would you like this it was fun I, I say we end it here how about what do you think yeah I'm, I'm fucking tired <laughs> <laughs> since it's more of this is more of an organic end to it so uh as I said at the top of the show, plug your shit. Uh, Instagram is going to be cruise underscore kale underscore. Kale is going to be C A L E. So C R U Z underscore C A L E underscore. Everything else should just be cruise kale. Uh, okay. I appreciate you for having me on here. Thank you. No problem, man. Thanks for. I know we've been trying to. I should have said this at the top of the show, but fuck it. The ending is just as appropriate. We've been trying to do this ever since I started the, like I started thinking about the whole podcast thing. I thought, cause I remember I texted you about it. Oh, uh, I think it was way back in, um, it was really long time ago, but I was like, Oh yeah. Uh, cause it was before I started the one-on-one podcast this one and i was gonna have you on the one that with my buddies remember yeah. and i was like oh yeah we'll do this and then i'll have you and eli and then it would be a good way to promote your brand and all that but uh i'd say this uh podcast has been in the works for at least at least about four months so yeah um uh... I'd say it's a. Uh, I came out pretty well. Yeah, don't you I think? Mean, like we're we're gonna eventually do more too. So I'll be better. I'll be better and better. Uh, but it wasn't this one. Later on, uh, when like I end up getting out there, it'll be a whole lot easier to do it. Yeah, I mean we're still gonna do it over Discord because that'd be the easiest way for me to record it. But that'd just be for the audio portion. We're going to do it like face to face, but you know, we'd still do it yeah. through Discord because that'd be the easiest file wise. But this has been an hour and four minutes of my voice and Cruz Kale's voice or Caleb or whatever the fuck he wants to go by. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd. 
with this with this podcast i've i've broken the fourth wall and i've went through hell and high water so you can only go downhill from here thanks for joining us for this hour plus long podcast where you heard our voices you heard stories about my childhood his childhood and all the stories about how he started fighting and his mma career his aspirations in the mma uh, world and the music world thank you for joining us and i hope to see you next time peace out appreciate you give it Oh, I'm fucking up already. Shit. <laughs> Are we good? Yeah, we'll, we'll just cut this part out. <laughs>